Hey guys, this is Bruce Marshall with Simpler Trading doing the nightly market update for Wednesday, May the 8th. Happy Wednesday, happy hump day. Hope your week is going great and more importantly, hope your trading is going great. Uh, we had a very kind of uh, uneventful day today. Uh, we ended up on the S&P closing uh, up um, or actually down literally one penny. Uh, kind of crazy how flat we were. This looks, I've got the S&P or the ES over here on the right, and you can see there was a lot of back and forth action, but we kind of ended up where we started. Um, same thing with the NASDAQ and the RUT. They were, it, was, it was a pretty calm day today. Um, if you see the ticks here, I don't know if you use the ticks or not, but they're pretty important. Uh, that's the zero line right there, and all day long we just kind of hovering around there. The, there's plus 400 there and there's minus 400 so you know again pretty pretty calm day um, you know that's that's good as the market kind of digests the wild swings we had a crazy week last week um, all over the place I suspect we'll have a crazy week next week uh, this week yeah not so much I mean here's the ES um, I moved the NASDAQ and the RUT um, so we can focus on the ES but um, you know, this was yesterday's session and, and it looks like this is a lot more wild than it was. Um, it's kind of more like that. Uh, I like to get on a granular, granular level when I'm looking this up, if, if we're trading during the day and, you know, can see the twists and turns much better. Um, but the black is yesterday's session, the light gray is overnight and the black was, this black is today's, uh, cash session of the ES. Uh, or the SPX. So um, again, not much going on. You can see uh, as far as what we've got going on, and that's to be expected. We really had just minimal economic data coming out this week. Now we have had a lot of Fed speak. Um, I think Cook was today. Kashkari was yesterday. We've got more. I think we've got more tomorrow and Friday, I believe. Um, but no major economic data. Uh, this week, now what we do have, be very aware of this because whatever you've got in your portfolio, if you're short or long, just be be ready. Um, Tuesday, they've kind of flipped them this month on in May. We've got PPI first on Tuesday and CPI is on 15th um, on Wednesday. So those, of course, everybody is watching what's the Fed going to do. Um, when are they going to cut rates and all that kind of stuff? And I don't think they're going to cut anytime soon. I mean, maybe we're looking at maybe September now. They keep kicking the can down the road. Um, and I think that is actually the smartest thing for them to do. Uh, but the market coming into this year, the market was anticipating six up to five or six rate cuts this year. And we were all, I, I have a lot of trader buddies I talk to you know on a, on a regular basis and we're all scratching our head going who who is thinking we're gonna get six rate cuts this year um, and now we're down to maybe we get two um, that's you know that's that's more reasonable and the Fed doesn't have to do anything um, they can kind of inflation has been coming in hot of course CPI PPI has been coming in hot the last I don't know four or five months in a row and so the Fed is trying to let the inflation kind of uh, do the work for them, I suppose. Maybe that's a way to say it. But, you know, who knows? Who knows what we're going to get next week? Uh, hotter inflation or a cooler number on inflation from CPI and PPI. And, you know, of course, uh, we get a cool number. Most likely we go higher. We get a hot number. Most likely we go lower. Um, but, again, hard to say. But let's look at where we are on the S&P. I like to start at a smaller time frame and kind of work our way out. Before we do that, let's look at this right here. So yesterday, this is ES. I'm going to switch this to SPX. And check that out, 5200.23. Now, I we in the, uh, in the bias room, I have a room at Simpler Trading called the bias room. Um, where we do a lot of trading, of course, obviously. And we're in there every day, and we're talking about trades and everything. And we have a trade on, and I was kind of getting a little bit nervous if we are going to go past 5,200 or not. Um, 
I had this, now this is off of uh, Dynamic Trader. This is SPX on a daily chart and we have timing for a high starting yesterday, Tuesday the 7th to Friday the 10th. And timing for a high simply means that uh, the timing sequence uh, is kicking in around these dates to reverse us back down, right? And if you notice, this is SPX on a daily chart, 5198.23, there's 5200, essentially 5200. And sure enough, we get rejected right there. And we came back down, pretty good bit. You know, 5200 to 5165 at the open this morning. Um, pretty, you know, it's a pretty decent sell-off there. Um, not sure if it will continue or not. So let's back this thing out and look at a little bit longer time frames. And you know, this is a 20-day chart. Now I've got voodoo lines up here. Um, this is a voodoo tree line. The green lines, tree line. White lines, a snow line. Um, and you can see we've been here. You know, we've been here before, right? And all the way down, that's 52.46 on the ES, down to 49.63, uh, um, all the way down and all the way we're coming back up. It would make sense if we come on up and tag that, right? I think that's probably, that's probably the path of least, well, it is the path of least resistance is for us to go higher. Um, but as you can see, rip, 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 and then you see this just kind of chop. Is that another one of these? Chop, 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 and fall. You know, back down here, maybe, you know. Even if we come up here, I think then we probably still make our way back down there like that. Um, I don't know. It, it's really hard to say right now, and guess what? Remember, what happens in the next couple of days, maybe by Thursday, Friday, maybe we do, we're right there, you know, we reach up, tag that, probably fail off that. Um, and then again on Tuesday, before the open, is when we're gonna get the big news, PPI, is the number gonna be hot or cold or cool? And, you know, is that gonna send us back down or not? And Or, or uh, propel us back up here to the all-time highs and then we just keep going. Um, again, I, normally have, I don't know, I normally have a really good feel for the S&P because I trade it every single day. Um, at this point, I really don't. And I'm talking to a lot of uh, trader friends that trade, uh, manage a lot of money. And most are not overly bullish. And I'm not overly bullish. And I'm scratching my head going, yeah, I'm not so sure this thing keeps going or not. Um, Again, kind of hard to trade off that. I'm, I'm kind of on both sides of this right now. Um, I've got uh, some trades hedged a little bit lower, and then I've got some that are stretched up here a little bit higher, so I can kind of catch either way. Uh, but that is, um, I don't have a super high confidence level in in which way we go from here. And that's fine. You know, that's maybe a lot of the times that we trade, it's, it's like that anyway. Um, but with something as big as the um, inflation numbers coming out next week, you know, we need to be lim nimble and light and kind of be ready to switch up or down, you know, kind of at a moment's notice. So let me show you one other thing here. Um, this, I'm going to put my grab candles and wave up. If we look here, now this is based on 34 EMA. And if you look at this, you'll see we have cleared that 34 EMA to the upside, and this opens the door potentially, you know, to more upside, right? Um, it opened it up up here on that, right there. It opened it up there. It opened it up there. And guess what? We failed and failed and failed. Um, so we're not out of the, you know, we're not out of the woods there yet. We could easily come back down here to the 34, or we could even come back down and retest that low. Um, here we retested the low that low, retested it, came back, tested it again, took it out, tested it again, took it out again. You know, this is a pretty, pretty um, ugly chart. I don't think we'd turn into anything like that, but, you know, um, it's all going to depend on what happens with the economic data we've got coming up and how that, that you know, how the if Fed will interpret all that and uh, if it's going to be super dovish or super hawkish or kind of neutral. Um, 
it's so far. This is May the eighth. You know, you you know, you've heard the saying, uh, "Sell in May and go away." That's always kind of rolling around in the back of my head. Uh, so far, not really happening yet. But again, it's it's too early to tell. So. Um, with that, I want to kind of keep it short and sweet because I don't really know. I'm just, I wanted to put, uh, I wanted to get out there what is important coming up and that's next Tuesday morning before the open and Wednesday morning before the open and to, you know, emphasize if you've got trade zone, um, if you've got profit and you're worried, go ahead and take the profit, uh, maybe do a little hedging, maybe stay light, stay in cash. I'm holding a little more cash than normal right now. Um, and just be ready, you know, be ready for anything at, at either side. But um, I'm a math guy, so I am thinking we're, you know, it's probably 60-40 that we go to the downside, honestly, from here. And not, again, not in a big way. Um, maybe we come back down, you know, to this level, this level, um, and then bounce. And let me get my drawing to And, you know, maybe then we start working our way back up. Or maybe we'd bounce deeper and start working our way back up. I kind of, I, I don't think this black swan, that's, I don't, that's not even in my vision right now. I don't see that happening without some really big shock to the system uh, in a bad way. Um, but I could definitely see us pulling back uh, to any of these other smaller levels. So with that, again, keep some powder dry for next week. Um, use tight stops, really watch what you've got and um, be ready to you know pull the trigger to buy or sell you know as needed and do it quickly um, so with that let me wind it up let me know if i can help you i'm in the um, simpler main room simpler central and i'm in the bias room uh, of course every day happy to help you just let me know if i can help so thanks for your time and i will talk to you soon take care without simpler trading i could not have financial independence this is one of the best investments that I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me.